same scenario uh, in sheep and goat farming, we are following the zero input system and uh, they are relying on the natural vegetation, grazing lands, uncultivated uh, lands that bushes, forbs, shrubs, stubbles, and tree fodder. They are rarely, they are kept on grain, cultivated fodder or crop residue. So the feeding of concentrates or supplements, or if you take the additives also, they are only restricted to the organized farms. But the concentrate feeding or supplementation of micro minerals, micro nutrition, nutrients like uh, vitamins or minerals are just restricted to organized farm. It has not reached the uh, rural sector or in an unorganized nomadic uh, sheep farming system. Most of the sheep and goat production system based on the grazing, they do not provide the mineral supplements. However, the trace element inclusion is rarely taken into account in the feed formulation. Even if they take the um, mineral supplementation, the only the major minerals like calcium, phosphorus are taken into account. But the trace elements are usually neglected or they are ignored. So coming to the minerals, if you take the definition, definition of the mineral is they are the solid crystalline chemical elements which cannot be decomposed, decomposed or synthesized by ordinary chemical reactions. And the minerals are the inorganic substance. These inorganic elements, they constitute the ash. If you are analyzing the nutrient content in any feed, the ash represents the minerals. Okay. So the ash estimation is done by ignition, ignition of the organic matter. There are a number of inorganic elements which are essential. The essential minerals are restricted to a mineral element, which has a metabolic role. The, the minerals which has metabolic role are categorized as essential minerals. They include calcium, phosphorus, sodium, chlorine, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, zinc, manganese, copper, iodine, and cobalt. There are other minerals which are having a metabolic role but their requirements are not so clear. They are selenium, molybdenum, and chromium. And there are certain minerals which the metabolic functions are not known, but there are some evidences that they have beneficial role in the body. They include nickel, boron, lithium, fluorine, and vanadium. And uh, plants and animal tissues contain there are 30 mineral elements for which we do the no essential functions has been found. So the classification of the essential minerals into major elements and trace elements depends on the concentration in the animal and also the quantity of these elements which are required in the diet. Normally the trace elements are uh, required less than 50 milligrams and up to 100 milligrams per kg of diet. So uh, the requirement is less. That is why they are categorized into trace elements. If the requirement is more than 100 milligrams, usually the major elements are expressed in terms of percentage, percentage of the diet. Those for which no requirement is known, uh, but uh, which are thought to be required in very small amount, they're called as ultra trace elements. So with this basic knowledge, we can see, see, we need the minerals in very small quantities. It is one or two percent of the diet usually, but they are required for overall health and productivity and profitability of the herd. They are required for the growth. They are required for the wool production. They are very much required for the reproduction. Some of the minerals are required for the overall health as already Dr. Viregoda sir told, it is required for the immunity, health of the sheep or goat. And of course, if the productivity is increased, wool or grow meat production, if it is improved, or the uh, number of uh, the lambs, lambing rate, if it is increased, then obviously it will lead to, it will uh, give rise to profitability. If in an uh, if the adequate minerals are there in the in the body, the immunity, 
enzyme functions or growth or fertility and there will not be any symptoms but in subclinical level the immunity enzyme function growth and fertility decreases when the mineral level is reduced to show the clinical symptoms then we can see uh, the we can uh, go for the many uh, methods like using the blood or using the tissues if the on post mortem uh, diagnosis so we can categorize this uh, minerals into two groups major minerals and micro minerals micro minerals are also called as trace minerals these are the synonyms major minerals are calcium phosphorus potassium sodium chlorine sulfur or magnesium uh, we are now concentrating only on the trace minerals we uh, there are uh, 11 trace minerals out of that very important are iron zinc copper molybdenum selenium iodine manganese and cobalt as i already told the macro minerals are required and they are expressed as percentage of the diet while the micro minerals are usually quoted as parts per million if you see the example as per the national academy of science or nutrient requirement of goods the calcium it is required in 0.2% phosphorus 0.2 to 0.4 potassium 0.5 to 0.4 like that it is in the percentage of the diet and uh, if you see the mineral distribution in the body about 96% of the body consists of four organically bound elements carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen the principal cations and anions that is elements this minerals they account for 3.5 to 4% of the body weight in that 3.5 to 4% 46% is calcium which uh, which are there in skeletal system 29% is phosphorus which is also there in skeletal system 25% is potassium sodium chlorine sulfur and magnesium and remaining only 0.3% is micro minerals although only 0.3% is there they play very very vital role in the health and productivity of the animals coming to the factors which are affecting the trace element requirement uh the age age is a one factor or otherwise physiological stage of the animal is a factor which affects the requirement of trace elements the requirement for young pregnant and lactating animals which are in challenging situations they have more requirement they have greater demands for these trace elements and the second factor is level of production and the third factor is soil fertility uh, the, the fertilizers that we use fertilizers also affects the requirement if the we are uh, regularly uh, giving the soil fertilizers applying the soil fertilizers like uh, potassium uh, nitrogen uh, phosphorus then the it also uh, affects the uh, the trace element uh, content of the plants indirectly next factor is soil ph the soil ph will directly affects the uh, the content of uh, the micro minerals in the soil as the ph increases there are some minerals which decreases there are some minerals which increases so ph will affect the uh, trace element requirement the soil type which also affects the trace element requirement i am telling all these factors we are related to soil because uh, the same soil the the forages are grown so indirectly these factors are affecting the animals also so because uh, coming to the last point the forages the type of forages that we are growing the species of forages that we are grown uh, that is another factor so depending on all these factors the requirement of the trace elements by the animal is affected and uh, some area requires uh, the the requirement for the animals in some area differ, di di differs from other area okay in one uh, the animals sheep and goat in one district the mineral requirement differs from another district 
so for this uh, the government uh, the central government has given a uh, the NINP uh, has already uh, studied the, the area specific mineral mixture. They have already formulated, they have come up with the product and that will I, that I'll go to share in the later part. So coming to the diagnosis, the mineral systems are complex. So one test by one test, we cannot uh, confirm the diagnosis. We have to go for the soil test because uh, it is useful for uh, uh, to know the major deficiencies. Herbage analysis may be misleading in part due to interactions between, and you should go for the blood and tissue test to, go, to get an accurate diagnosis. Whenever we are going to test the mineral level in the blood, it is always recommended at least a six, uh, six sheep per group are sampled due to individual variation in the animal. So next we are uh, uh, going with the first mineral, zinc which I feel it's very, very important trace mineral. Coming to the functions, so zinc is a, uh, uh, having a, it is a component of more than 200 metalloenzymes. The important metalloenzymes are carbonic anhydrase, carboxypeptidases, A and B, alkaline phosphatase, alcohol dehydrogenase, glutamic dehydrogenase, lactic dehydrogenase. And zinc is an essential for many nucleic acid uh, synthesis. For example, DNA polymerases, RNA polymerases. And for the synthesis of these nucleic acids, zinc is uh, important. It is playing an important role. And for the proliferation of the lymphoid cells, zinc plays an important role. And uh, the role of zinc on immunity, it plays an important role in bactericidal activity. It regulates the phagocytosis by macrophages and neutrophils. As we know, the macrophages and neutrophils are uh, the important factors which are uh, uh, which plays a role in uh, immunity. And uh, it also zinc also plays a role in regulation of cytokines and uh, antibody productions. And the, the zinc also has a role in the biological activity of interleukins. And zinc is necessary for the activity of some of the immunity mediators like thymolin. This thymolin promotes the T lymphocyte maturation. And zinc is a major intracellular regulator of lymphocyte apoptosis. That is the natural killer cell activity. And uh, zinc is a, a part of many proteins. There are thousand known proteins associated with zinc. And this, uh, as I already told, the zinc uh, protein is involved in transcription and translation of genetic material. And the deficiency of zinc in uh, rapidly growing tissues will reduce the DNA, RNA, protein synthesis. And it will impair the cellular division, growth and repair. Zinc is uh, uh, having a role in metabolism of fatty acids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. And it is a part of testosterone, synthesis of this insulin, prostaglandin metabolism. Zinc is uh, uh, having very vital role in skin, health of the skin, because it is uh, involved in a nucleic acid, skin nucleic acids and collagen synthesis. In relation with vitamin A, zinc is involved in the normal functioning of the ovary. For the rupture of the follicle, and the oocyte maturation for ovulation, zinc is controlling these functions. So hence, in collaboration with vitamin A, it is actually uh, controlling these functions, ovulation, oocyte maturation, and uh, follicle rupture. And uh, it is also having a control on the normal vision. For the conversion of the retinol to retinol, zinc is required. You can see this diagram. So it acts as a cofactor along with the dehydrogenase to convert the retinol to retinol. So if you can just imagine if the zinc is absent, so these are all the functions which are going to be hampered. You see, it is also involved in the reproduction for the normal spermatogenesis and secondary sex organ development, zinc plays a role. In females, Adequate concentration of zinc in the serum and in the diets are vital for uterine involution. 
and tissue repair after the parturition. And in, uh, there are some uh, research I would like to share. Uh, in Australia, the sheep grazing on zinc deficient pasture supplemented with 140 milligram of zinc weekly increased the lamb production in relation to the if which are not treated with zinc. And in 1919, Minson has uh, done some work in goats, the consumption of low zinc diets has led to low conception rate, prolificacy, and zinc supplementation has increased the prolificacy by 14%. Minson in 1990 has done some work in, in rams that were fed ration with 2.4 ppm of zinc, which is actually a deficiency, the low level. 2.4 ppm is low level, which has resulted in atrophy of the seminiferous tubules and complete inhibition of spermatogenesis was observed. So zinc plays a key role in embryo implantation also. And zinc is having role in neurogenesis, neuronal migrations, synaptogenesis. Zinc is known for destruction and destruction of cancerous and precancerous cells. It is involved in healing of the wound. And we have, we use the uh, wood powder, which is having the zinc. Okay. Whenever we are hurt and if there is a bleeding or wound, we use the zinc powder that because uh, it is having the role in healing. And it is, zinc is also in, uh, plays an important role in membrane stability of the RBC. So one of the research work that was conducted in Bangalore in our college in 2017 by Ram Chandraya et al. He has supplemented the zinc to growing lamps. Uh, they have made three groups, T1, which is control, T2, and T3 group, wherein T1 was uh, getting the standard diet, which is based on finger millet straw and compounded feed mixture. That is a standard diet. It is a control group. T2 was a group which was supplemented with 100 ppm of zinc. T3 was a group which has uh, given 200 ppm of zinc. We can see the average daily gain. This, the group T2, which was receiving 100 ppm of zinc extra, was showing 103.2 average daily gain compared to the control group, which was significantly different from the control group. Whereas in the T3, which was receiving 200 ppm of zinc, has shown 102. So there was no significant difference between T2 or T3. So that means they have concluded that additional supplementation of zinc at the rate of 100 ppm will give 100 grams per day. That means three kgs of extra body weight gain can be achieved. And in 2019, uh, the Suresh al, he was my student under my supervision, we have conducted a trial of zinc supplementation in goats. In control group, there was no supplementation, only the ICR recommended zinc level, that is 40 ppm. But in T1, we supplemented zinc at the rate of 100 ppm. In T2 group, we have supplemented uh, the 2% urea. And T3, we have supplemented uh, both zinc as well as urea. We have got uh, the satisfactory result in only T1 group, that is 90 grams per day was achieved, the average daily gain, which was significantly different from control. So overall, I would like to say that additional supplementation of 100 milligram or 100 ppm of zinc uh, has a good result. So coming to the deficiency of zinc, See, this uh, the, uh, the zinc deficiency leads to hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis. We can see in the pictures, rough hair coat, alopecia, and emaciation. The animals will be very weak. There will be decrease in the, even if the uh, intake is good, dry matter intake, daily feed intake is good, but they suffer from emaciation. You can see the inflammation of nose, and uh, mucosal hemorrhages, nostrils, thickening and cracking of the skin around the nostrils. You can see here the uh, skin eczema uh, in and around the around the eyes. See alopecia. You can see 
so this this is a, a, a very common symptom of zinc deficiency see dry scaly skin on ears is also seen and you can uh, differentially diagnose this with uh, uh, the parasitic infestation so even uh, during mange the same type of symptoms are seen you can scrape it out and go for a parasitic uh, uh, diagnosis or otherwise it will be uh, usually the zinc deficiency leads this type of uh, lesions uh, the cracks in the skin of coronary bands around the hooves is one of the symptom so stiffness of the joint uh, the swelling of fetlock uh, these are the uh, other uh, symptoms development of the uh, horny overgrowths of mucus of the lips is seen when there is a deficiency and even the uh, ibrahim et al in 2016 he has conducted a work the effect of zinc deficiency on the blood parameters the wbc count was significantly decreased from 0 day to 20th day uh, with a decrease in uh, zinc and uh, you can see the lymphocyte count lymphocyte percentage was also decreased with uh, zinc deficient uh, status the sources of zinc uh, the these are all the sources of zinc the yeast is a source legumes are rich in zinc germs of the cereal grains are rich in zinc brands wheat bran rice bran these are all rich in zinc corns are rich in zinc colostrum is rich in zinc the bioavailability of the zinc from plant source is relatively poor due to their phytic acid content the phytic acid content which will not allow the zinc to get absorbed so the bioavailability is poor but the animal by products such as meat meal fish meal they are usually richer source of zinc than plant source the commercial sources of zinc are zinc sulfate zinc oxide zinc chloride and zinc carbonate among them the usually we use zinc sulfate as the or zinc oxide and the bioavailability is good in zinc oxide but the solubility is less coming to the next mineral manganese manganese is important for the bone formation reproduction growth enzyme functioning it also activates t helper cells besides having a crucial role in reproduction of sheep so coming to the distribution of manganese in sheep the manganese is highest in wool as per the grace 1983 wool has highest Uh, content of manganese compared to the gi tract or liver or skin usually skin will be a storehouse of other all other minerals but wool is the uh, highest in manganese functions of manganese with metalloenzyme just like zinc the uh, manganese also has a role with metalloenzymes it has a, a relation with pyruvate carboxylase superoxide dismutase and glycosyl transferases manganese is required for normal lipid carbohydrate metabolism through the activity of this pyruvate carboxylase tissue activity of the superoxide dismutase are low in lambs at birth subsequently there will be a not, uh, marked rise in the uh, lung superoxide dismutase by 4 weeks in the birth these metalloenzymes will be less but as the age advances this uh, enzymes will increase this enzyme why i am stressing because it is important for phagocytosis indirectly it is involved in the uh, immunity of sheep or goat most of the manganese in the ovine heart is present as superoxide dismutase in the heart this is the most dominant dismutase and elsewhere manganese is needed for synthesis of the a uh, mucopolysaccharide which is required for the good health of the cartilage and this is done with the activation of glycosyl transferase right uh, the role of manganese in reproduction the manganese deficiency will leads to impairment if impairment of reproductive functions both in males and females 
manganese has a role in uh, functioning of corpus luteum studies of manganese distribution among tissues have shown that in an anestress and in normal if you compare in the uh, the in a normal one it is having a role in the manganese has a role in corpus luteum functioning the depressed or delayed estrus poor conception rate or abortions have have been seen in studies with uh, taken by underwood and settle 99 uh, by experimentally uh, uh, creating the manganese deprivation in goats and ewes they have seen this symptoms that means it has a role in reproduction it is a it is having a important role in reproduction manganese deprivation has been found to restrict the testicular growth in ram lambs as per masters et al 1988 the uh, sources dietary sources of manganese see uh, the cereal by products the mill by products of cereals they are rich compared to the uh, as such the grains maize barley wheat oat sorghum and wheat bran they are analyzed in different uh, the samples from different countries uh, if you see the uh, manganese concentration milligrams per kg of dry matter it is highest wheat bran is showing the highest concentration compared to other uh, sources protein concentrates of animal origin like blood meal meat meal or feather meal or fish meal they contain very less manganese compared to the plant origin see soya bean meal that we usually use is rich in manganese which is 35 to 55 mg per kg of dry matter manganese is one of the least abundant element in milk so the milk is having very less quantity of manganese that is 0.1 max to max it is 0.1 mg per liter in any species but in colostrum manganese is there compared to milk colostrum is rich in manganese and the concentration of manganese in milk cannot be raised even if you uh, feed uh, in Uh, by feeding manganese in the uh, diet so you will not you cannot raise the manganese in milk the pasture vary markedly in manganese about a high mean value of 86 mg per kg dry matter the soils usually contain 300 to 1100 mg per manganese per kg of dry matter see in the soil as i already told the soil ph affects the manganese concentration so if you see the manganese with increase in the ph it has reduced that means as the ph increases the cobalt and manganese level decreases so the liming of the soil will decrease the cobalt and manganese whereas the molybdenum it increases with the ph uh, already i told you the soil ph will affect certain minerals as the ph increases molybdenum increases but cobalt and manganese it decreases with the ph requirement of manganese in sheep and goat uh, for a live weight gain and body uh, the wool growth 13 mg of manganese per kg of dry matter is adequate but for breeders breeders 16 mg of per kg of dry matter is needed female goats fed on diets containing 20 mg of manganese per kg in the first year and 6 mg in the second year as well as 100 mg of manganese per kg there was no difference except that reproductive performance was greatly impaired at the low level that means the manganese has important role in reproduction only at the low level the reproduction is impaired so deficiency symptoms the deficiency symptoms of manganese include difficulty in standing reluctance to walk deformity of the four legs delayed onset of estrus conception rate will be poor and the birth weight will be low so since this birth weight will uh, affect the later on the uh, after weaning uh, the live uh, daily weight gain will be affected that is why the lamb at lamb weight at birth is very important in goats there are tarsal joint excrescences that is overgrowth the leg deformities and ataxia is seen if manganese deficiency is there
manganese supplementation the incorporation of manganese salts or oxides into mineral supplements the commonly used sources are manganese sulfate manganese oxide and manganese carbonate of these the manganese sulfate has the highest availability the toxicity manganese toxicity uh, we can a sheep can tolerate up to 3000 mg of manganese per kg of dry matter for 21 days when given as manganese oxide that means the uh, threshold level of this manganese is higher compared to other minerals like copper so the animals sheep can tolerate up to 3000 mg so next minerals we are going to discuss is cobalt it's a regular a regular supply of cobalt in the sheep diet is needed for uh, the vitamin b12 synthesis the ruminants as such for the synthesis of vitamin b12 they need cobalt in the diet if sufficient cobalt is supplied in the diet vitamin b12 can be synthesized in the rumen with the help of rumen microorganisms and this vitamin b12 is required for both optimal energy and protein metabolism it is also connected with the production of rbc so the the scientific name of vitamin b12 is cyanocobalamine the name cyanocobalamine is because of the cobalt in the vitamin b12 so the deficiency of this cyanocobalamine will leads to the reduced production of rbc and that is why it is leading to the anemia which is called as pernicious anemia the deficiency of cobalt leads to anemia sheep are more vulnerable to cobalt deficiency compared to the cattle the younger sheep are more susceptible due to their higher energy demands so since this is involved in energy and protein metabolism and the younger sheep are uh, they need more energy if there is a deficiency uh, they are more susceptible younger sheep or the growing uh, lambs are more susceptible symptoms of cobalt deficiency usually the first if symptom is anemia if you see the blood uh, your blood testing will lead, uh, will uh, 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 diagnosis can be done by blood testing that is anemia ill thrift you can uh, observe only 30% uh, lesser uh, than the expected growth and uh, the appetite will be reduced the reproductive performances will be poor the vp eyes with damp matted wool below the eyes open fleece or wool break birth of weak laps these are all the symptoms of cobalt deficiency cobalt levels required it is suggested that cobalt deficiency in sheep occurs when grazing pasture with cobalt concentration which is less than 0.08 mg per kg of dry matter diet should contain at least 0.1 mg per kg of dry matter of cobalt so that is deficiency symptoms occur if the level of this vitamin b12 the concentration is reduced below 0.2 micrograms per ml there are certain factors climatic factors which affects the cobalt availability through pasture climate affects the cobalt content in the pasture as well as the soil okay the availability of pasture cobalt is affected by soil ph in in general the cobalt in the grassland decreases as the soil ph rises so the cobalt deficiency mainly occurs in deep sandy soils loamy sands and gravelly sands the cobalt deficiency is more likely to occur in iron rich alkaline and manganese rich soil due to cobalt being locked up with these minerals there is there will be a, a clash between these minerals okay the clover typically contains higher concentration of cobalt than rye grass see in the rainy season there will be a leaching of soil the cobalt in the soil so poorly drained soil will be higher in cobalt but that means water logging will increase the cobalt in the plants if there is a drain drainage draining of the uh, uh, water along with the water cobalt also leaches so high winter rainfall will uh, causes decreased cobalt 
high pasture growth rates in spring will dilute the concentration of cobalt. So cobalt deficiency usually occur in uh, animals grazing in uh, rapidly growing grassy pastures and lactating females receiving such pasture need to be supplemented with cobalt to provide the vitamin B12 to the offspring. Okay, if the, if the animals are grazing on such pasture in uh, the winter rainfall, such animals should be given vitamin B12 or otherwise cobalt in the diet. Otherwise, once the lambs will suffer from cobalt deficiency. As I already told, the uh, cobalt deficiency again leads to the weak, uh, weaker lambs or the reduced body weight gain. The animal factors which influences the requirement of cobalt is age, species, and worm burden. Age, the newborn animals have low reserves. That is why they require more cobalt. Although the colostrum provides vitamin B12, Later on, after three, four days, the milk will be having very less cobalt. So we have to supplement the cobalt to the mother so that in turn, it will be available through the milk. The weaner sheep are more prone for cobalt deficiency than the adult. Next factor is species. The sheep and the goats are more susceptible to cobalt deficiency than cattle. Then worm burdens. The parasitic worms, if they are more, in the gut, then uh, the cobalt deficiency is more because they they utilize the vitamin B12 which is available in the body and uh, the young animals with heavy worm burdens will be more susceptible to cobalt deficiency. So avoid the grazing of young animals onto pasture which are high in worm load or otherwise follow the rotation grazing. So rotation grazing, if you have uh, the land, uh, the enough of land, then rotation grazing can be followed because we can break the uh, parasitic life cycle. By the time we come from the last part of the land to again to the first part, by that time the larvae will die. So we can avoid the worms. So in turn, the worms feeding on the vitamin B12 can be reduced. So the deficiency symptoms can be reduced or loss can be reduced. Diagnosis of cobalt deficiency. The blood samples or post-mortem analysis can be done for vitamin B12 concentration. The blood test can be done and we can see the MMA that is methyl malonic acid concentration, which increases with the vitamin B12 deficiency. If it is more in the blood sample, that means it is suffering, animal is suffering from vitamin B12 deficiency or cobalt deficiency. And the analysis of the pasture, if the pasture is containing the point, less than 0 0.04 ppm of the cobalt, then it is deficiency is there. Response test, if the vitamin B12 injection is given to the animals and compare with the live weight gain of unsupplemented or uh, the, the animals which are not injected with B12, that is called a response test. You make two groups, one group with vitamin B12 injection, another group as such, you see the comparison. If they are responding, that means it is another way of diagnosis. Last is high worm burdens. We reduce the ability of vitamin B12 being absorbed is already discussed. So we must uh, focus on correcting the worm issues in the field. Cobalt supplementation. Cobalt can be given in, uh, uh, in the form of cobalt sulfate and uh, it increases the blood vitamin B12 levels for approximately uh, two weeks. Cobalt is often included in uh, multi-mineral drenches and the drenching every three to four weeks is, ad is adequate to prevent the deficiency in lamps. Cobalt leaks are available, but uh, it is variable, so we avoid that. And vitamin B12 injection can be highly effective. A single injection of vitamin B12 can last for six to eight weeks. And uh, newer products are available, which can last for six months, which will cover for six months. See, a rumen bolus can last up to six months. And it is uh, also relatively low cost and intraruminal cobalt pellets given using a bulleting gun are better for long-term prevention of deficiency. And these, uh, how to use this bulleting gun? 
there is one video uh, if, if you can see i'll uh, share So uh, you saw, I think you can, uh, you have saw the, how to use this uh, bulleting gun. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. So that is how, that was the gun which was having in liquid form. This is uh, for the bullets, for pellets, uh, we use this uh, gun. Okay. So coming, uh, coming to the next. Next uh, slide. In sheep, the pelleting is best done when lambs are weaned. The pellets are not suitable for lambs which are less than eight weeks of old. That means up to weaning, they are not suitable. One pellet is effective for one to three years. You can avoid the deficiency of this cobalt for one to three years if you are uh, having these pellets. Cobalt sulfate can be applied to the pasture. That is another option. You can apply the cobalt sulfate to the land pasture up to 2 kg per hectare and uh, the grazing stock can be rotated through spraying paddocks or strips of spray can be applied in each grazing paddock during winter. So there is one research which is conducted by Key Day in 2017. He has uh, done a research uh, in uh, the performance of lambs. The, uh, there were three groups, control groups, cobalt group, vitamin and mineral group. Control group was given a standard diet which, with no supplementation. Cobalt group, that is uh, given a cobalt of 2.1 milligrams per ml as in the form of cobalt sulfate at the interval of 14 days. Just observe, at the interval of 14 days, they have given cobalt sulfate at uh, uh, the rate of 2.1 milligrams per ml. And the third group, which was given the cobalt along with that vitamins and minerals, uh, the vitamin B12 was given 0.53 milligram. The selenium uh, 420, see here, here it is there. Uh, cobalt, vitamin B12 and selenium were given. But you can see the result. The average daily gain was higher compared to the third group, 215 grams in 115-157 days. The, there was no significant difference between the second and third group, 179 grams, 189 grams. But control group was significantly lesser. And the body weight was also significantly more in uh, second group and third group compared to the control group. My recommendation as per the observation is go for cobalt supplementation at the interval of 14 days, you can achieve more body weight gain. So cobalt in uh, cobalt only supplementation, this is the result okay so second group has a good result effect of cobalt deficiency in pregnant eaves on reproductive performance and lab viability this was one of the research conducted by fisher and uh, macpherson uh, macpherson sheep were fed a cobalt deficient ration and supplementation was by oral dose there were two groups in cobalt sufficient group there were no significant effect on 
live weight or body condition score or conception rate but the cobalt deficient eaves they produced very less number of lambs and had more stillbirths neonatal mortality uh, and compared to the sufficient cobalt sufficient uh, groups the lambs from deficient eaves were slower to start suckling and has reduced concentration of serum immunoglobulin g okay so this uh, uh, was the result this was the observation so uh, next mineral is selenium selenium is usually uh, it is uh, the role of selenium is always discussed along with the vitamin e because the selenium as well as vitamin e both have the antioxidant property they protect the tissues from oxidation and the breakdown of cell membranes selenium is essential for the synthesis of thyroid hormones and selenium has a play uh, it is an important role in immune function uh, that is why both are uh, antioxidants vitamin e and selenium so in the reproduction the role of selenium see uh, you can see here the uh, metal these are the enzymes the which are related with the selenium so the, almost all have antioxidant property antioxidants these antioxidant property and uh, very importantly the sperm meta uh, mitochondrial capsule selenoprotein the sperm mitochondrial capsule is important for male fertility and it exerts its effects at the mitochondrial level so that is how the at the molecular level the selenium has a role in especially in male fertility uh, the selenium supplementation with zinc and cobalt in rams it has improved the sperm motility as per candall and gestation sheep treated orally with selenium at monthly interval had greater lambing rates mcdowell has observed that grazing sheep in pasture treated with selenium increased the conception rate from 49 to 76% the significant increase in the conception rate they are involved in the prostaglandin synthesis parenteral or intramuscular selenium administration has shown the increments in pasturation uh, rates in sheep and uh, in one of the study it has been shown that selenium and vitamin e increases the percentage of use in estrus prolificacy in merino sheep uh, but uh, the gestation and lambing rates did not change but we we cannot come to a conclusion that uh, it will the supplementation of selenium and vitamin e will always uh, the pregnant eaves will respond uh, with the good results the uh, see example the in 2005 there was a uh, one research where an intramuscular injection of 0.31 mg of selenium and 4 4.2 international unit of vitamin e it has increased the concentration of selenium in blood and uh, the reproductive responses to treatment was only uh, the survivability of the kids was observed at uh, weaning and the white muscle disease was prevented other than that uh, no result was no not much uh, good results were seen and uh, the some of the observations it has uh, the yeast stress response as well as lambing rate was significant you can see the star mark the yeast stress response and the lambing rate was significant if you if they are supplied with the uh, the sodium selenate uh, injection okay if these are the some of the observation but the pregnancy and prolificacy was not uh, the the pregnancy there was no change in the pregnancy but the yeast stress response lambing rate prolificacy was significantly increased with the injection of sodium selenate symptoms of selenium deficiency the very important symptom is white muscle disease in lambs is also known as stiff lamb disease you can see the photo here it affects the muscles of lambs leg which uh, leads to difficult to stand the white muscle disease can last up to 6 months in lambs and results in poor condition and performance there will be a ill thrift the expected growth cannot be seen and poor reproductive performances with the deficiency of selenium early embryonic death is seen in 3 to 4 weeks after conception so resulting in a higher incidences of barren eaves in males the deficiency can lead to poor fertility selenium level required a marginal risk of selenium deficiency in sheep is posed when the diet provides 
0.025 to 0 0.05 milligrams of selenium per kg trimatter. So the level of selenium will depends on the plant species. The rye grasses are having more selenium than clovers. So the diagnosis, blood sampling, or the pasture and soil analysis, you can with these samples we can diagnose the selenium deficiency. Supplementation of selenium, the oral drenching of selenium, uh, uh, it can be uh, taken. And this uh, Roman boluses can last for six months. The injections of selenium uh, can last up to one year. The pasture application, another uh, way of supplementation, it is uh, may result in toxic level for several weeks. Uh, so it is uh, not a safe method. But uh, during these uh, uh, up to one month, uh, you know, you should not allow the animals for grazing. After that, you can uh, allow them for the grazing. So the field level of application of selenium. Selenium in the diet is absorbed reasonably efficiently at between 35 to 85 percent, with the majority being absorbed in the duodenum. The excess selenium, which is uh, which is toxic to sheep, the selenium should only be supplemented if required. However. The selenium toxicity in sheep are relatively uncommon. So commonly, we cannot see, uh, we are not seeing the selenium toxicity, but the symptoms of the poisoning include colic, diarrhea, and you can see collapsing. So the uh, ultimately, it may lead to the mortality. It's very rarely you can see the selenium toxicity or poisoning. Next is copper. The copper, it is the role is, uh, it is having important role in cellular respiration, bone formation, connective tissue development, and it is essential uh, for catalytic, uh, as a catalytic cofactor of some metalloenzymes. The role of copper, it is an essential component of uh, range of enzymes required for normal body functions, that is cell energy metabolism, uh, signaling the nervous system. So if there is an excess of copper, then it will be stored in the liver. And liver can store up to some extent. But beyond that, if the storage level is increased, then excess will be released to the bloodstream. And once the copper is uh, releasing to the blood, then their destructions of RBC starts, it will damage the liver, and ultimately death can be seen. The symptoms. The major symptom of this uh, is the sway back. Sway back is the major symptom of this deficiency uh, in newborn lambs. These are the pictures which are showing this sway back. This occurs when a ewe experiences a dietary deficiency of copper during mid pregnancy, resulting in uh, the, the lesions uh, to the developing lambs in uh, the spinal cord or the damage to the spinal cord and cerebrum. And the lambs are uh, stillborn or weak, and this is seen characteristically in hind leg uh, weakness. Uh, you can see the spectacle eye. So this is spectacle eye. This is uh, uh, one of the symptom of this uh, deficiency. Uh, the uh, poor growth rate, scoring, and poor fleece quality that is called steely wool. You can see the steely wool is another symptom. So the copper toxicity is very common in sheep. And uh, sheep are very highly sensitive compared to goats. Okay, Certain breeds like Texel are more susceptible. Sheep are highly sensitive as, a, as per the Meshi 2000. Uh, and uh, goats are tolerant to some extent compared to sheep. Copper levels required in the body. Copper requirements for goats is 8 to 10 milligrams per kg. And copper requirements of sheep is 7 to 11 milligrams per kg of dry matter. Deficiency symptoms are seen if the blood level of copper is less than 14 micromoles per liter. Severe deficiency can be seen if the level is reduced uh, less than 6 micromoles per liter. And recommended copper level is 10 milligrams and the toxicity is up to 18, 17 to 18 milligrams per kg dry matter. 
and uh, the symptoms of toxicity is seen once it crosses 25 milligrams per kg of dry matter. Copper deficiency can occur due to many factors. First is soil, the level of copper in the soil or pasture, and even the level of molybdenum and sulfur also affects the copper. If the, in the presence of sulfur and high level of molybdenum, copper is not available for absorption. That is called thiomolybdate. This structure which is formed in combination with copper, molybdenum and sulfur is called thiomolybdate. The, with the formation of this thiomolybdate, copper will not be available for absorption in the body. So the molybdenum level should be taken care. Iron can also play a role. Even if the iron level is more, copper will reduce. So iron uh, is having another uh, the antagonistic uh, effect. Excessive liming, the pH if increases, I, I already I have shown you the graph, increase the, it will increase the molybdenum. So once the molybdenum is increased, uh, the copper level decreases. So molybdenum should be optimum. It should not be more in the diet also, in the soil also. And pH should be maintained in the soil also. Liming, lime we should not apply in the soil more. So to increase the molybdenum, you cannot uh, apply more lime. So goats are very sensitive to copper deficiency uh, than sheep. So, sorry, this is uh, observed by Draxlers, but usually the sheep are very sensitive. The role of copper in the reproduction, low copper content in the sheep, it is having a role in uh, uh, the reproduction. So it causes embryo loss, inhibits embryo implantation and fetal death. Although it is very, it is showing uh, the copper has a role in uh, even in immunity also, but the, uh, the threshold level is very less. Only 18, up to 18 milligrams you can feed. More than that, you cannot supplement. So beyond that, it leads to toxicity. So the deficiency has shown that uh, some of the research uh, reported that from 148 aborted is found that the abortions, uh, it causes abortions uh, uh, if the level is low uh, with the low copper concentration. And uh, they, have, they have observed that the goats with copper deficient diets uh, has shown low conception rate, 50 percent just gestating goats with copper deficiency resulted in abortion, mummified fetus, hemorrhagic placentas, necrotic lesions. In sheep, the postnatal lordosis detected as muscle weakness and ataxia is also caused by copper deficiency during gestation. When goats are exposed to prolonged period of copper deficiency, it may also lead to nymphomaniac reproductive behavior. So uh, continuous, uh, uh, the animals will be female, animals will be in heat, even in males also. The blood copper levels are not directly related with the reproductive behavior. Okay, sometimes the blood level shows normal, but uh, behaviors will be different. So blood is not an ideal uh, way of uh, diagnosing. Blood sample is not an ideal way of diagnosing for copper deficiency or toxicity. Either deficiency of copper, excess of molybdenum or sulfur leads to reproductive disorders in sheep and goat. The sources of copper, cereals and concentrate feeds are rich in copper. Distillery grains, dry distillers grains, uh, brewers distiller grains are rich in copper. When you are feeding or supplementing this distiller grain, you must be uh, cautious, you must be uh, aware of this uh, the copper, it's rich in copper. Yeah, you just check the level of copper, I estimate the copper in the supplements, and then you uh, restrict the percentage of inclusion in the diet. And the molasses sugar beet is rich in copper. Pig manure is rich in copper. If you use a pig manure for uh, uh, the cultivation of forages, then you must be aware that pig manure is rich in copper. Diagnosis of copper deficiency. First is a dose response. You give a dose of copper. If it is recovering, then is well and good. Then 
Uh, another way is analysis of liver tissue in dead or slaughtered stock. This is blood sample analysis. The, if the plasma level is below 9.4 micromoles per liter, it indicates the depleting reserves of copper in the liver. However, the lamp performance is not adversely affected until the level is less than three micromoles per liter. Supplementation of copper, the prevention of copper deficiency is much more important than treatment because there is no treatment for this way back. That is why prevention is better. Copper can be supplemented through feed ration or mineral blocks. However, toxicity must be considered. So long-term cover can provide a copper uh, heptonate injections or uh, more commonly orally using gelatin capsule, that is copper oxide uh, in mid pregnancy, it has shown a good result. Next is iodine. It is essential component in hormone thyroxine which plays a central role in energy metabolism. Iodine is uh, important for normal fetal growth and development. Iodine plays a role in appetite control and uh, it is uh, important for adaptation to temperature changes. Along with the selenium, it is found to play an important role in brown fat metabolism in lambs and it is required for the survivability of the lambs after birth. Iodine deficiency, it, uh, in the, it causes in the late term abortions and the stillborn, stillborn via weak lamps with poor survival rate in lamps uh, is seen. Uh, it is uh, also the deficiency of iodine uh, leads to the goiter, that is enlargement of thyroid gland. It's a very common goiter is a, a deficiency symptom of iodine deficiency. Uh, it, reduce, it leads to reduced appetite and performance. So toxicity usually is not seen. Iodine toxicity is usually not seen. Uh, but if the adversely oversupply of iodine in late pregnancy can lead to the lamb death due to reduced antibody absorption. So leading to the infection. Iodine level required. The average iodine level in Indian pasture is 0.15 milligrams per kg dry matter. The minimum recommended level of iodine to prevent deficiency is 0.2 milligrams per kg of dry matter. And in pregnant and lactating stock, it can be 0.5 milligram. You must be taken, uh, the care must be taken uh, when uh, grazing certain forages, particularly brassicas, which are known to contain substances which are goitrogenic and uh, it interferes with thyroid production and uh, utilization resulting in increased requirement of iodine. So care must be taken while grazing on such plants. Iodine level vary between uh, the farms, but there is no clear relation between the grass concentration and soil type. Levels are generally higher in coastal area. The iodine levels are uh, more in coastal area. And the, uh, the, uh, when you are feeding the forages to the animals which are grown in coastal area, you must be uh, taken care, okay? The, the diagnosis of iodine deficiency, so goiter, as I already discussed, this is observed, where thyroid weight to body weight ratio will be 0.4 grams per kg. Analysis of sample of, of a stillborn lamb, uh, thyroid gland, uh, you can, uh, with this, you can diagnose the iodine deficiency. In adult sheep, blood can be taken and tested for thyroxine level. And it, you can also see the inorganic iodine level in the blood. Whereas the, uh, where the iodine deficiency is suspected, the selenium should also be investigated as a deficiency, as this can also lead to uh, reduced thyroid hormone. So selenium is also involved in uh, reduced thyroid hormone. So a differential diagnosis can be made by seeing the selenium level as well as iodine level. Supplementation. So you can uh, go for iodized oil injections. So uh, oral trenches of uh, iodine can be uh, given. The slow release boluses can be given. Where one more than one deficiency is seen, you can uh, use the uh, combinations of different minerals, the boluses, which are having combination of different minerals like iodine, cobalt, and selenium. 
administered with the pre tupping provides a cost effective way of supplementing use so next is molybdenum the soil vary widely in molybdenum content with the sandy soils at the low extreme and marine or origin at the high extreme the proportion of molybdenum in soil rises with the rise in the ph the cereals they rarely uh, contain more than 1 mg corn silage has the least molybdenum so the animal feed sources are mostly low in molybdenum with the exception of marine products the requirements as per nrc is 0.52 and 1.1 uh, mg per kg dry matter in the diet for sheep and goat effectively the molybdenum in the presence of copper and selenium uh, it forms a thiomolybdate so we discussed this point so we have to see the level of the molybdenum uh, when copper is excess if they form the complexes majorly monothiomolybdate dithiomolybdate trithiomolybdate and tetrathiomolybdate the thiomolybdates reacts with the free copper atoms to form insoluble copper complexes then copper utilization is abruptly affected the recommended copper and molybdenum ratio is 3.3 3 is to 1 to 6 is to 1 the copper and molybdenum ratio is 3 is to 1 to 6 is to 1 the by, by elevating the molybdenum and sulfur production and expression of hormones such as estrogen lh and fsh are altered so significant growth response to added molybdenum and an improvement in cellulose digestion is reported in lambs which are fed on the diet containing the 0.36 mg of molybdenum so high level of uh, high level of dietary molybdenum uh, 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 will lead to diarrhea joint abnormalities lameness osteoporosis and uh, the fractures in the bone so next is iron so iron is about uh, 60% of the iron in the body is present in the form of hemoglobin it is required iron is required for oxygen transport it is since it is a component of hemoglobin if the iron deficiency is there it leads to anemia and the connective tissue development is influenced by iron activated hydroxylases and it is an important component of the enzyme cytochrome oxidases so anemia can also be caused by blood loss due to injury internal parasites external parasites so the these are all the factors which uh, causes anemia so we must be uh, in such situations the iron level will be low sources of iron the grains and seeds are rich in iron the most of the cereal grains contain 30 to 60 mg of iron maize gluten rice bran barley oats wheat these are all the cereal grains which are having the iron good level of iron the leguminous uh, seeds oil meals contain 100 to 200 mg of iron milk is very low in iron uh, uh, kids which are raised for long time on milk alone they develop anemia because uh, mil- uh, the iron level in the milk is less especially the lactating uh, ewes or uh, the goats they uh, should be supplemented with iron the kids should be supplemented with iron in the creep feed otherwise milk will not provide enough quantity of iron in uh, to the young ones so iron sulfate is a common means of adding iron to the diet so forages in some areas uh, uh, they have excessively high level of iron that will suppress the utilization of other trace minerals dietary allowance of trace elements in ruminants so as per the icr recommendation dietary allowance is in pre ruminant lambs it is uh, the copper level should be uh, one and uh, the growing uh, lambs it is 3 and uh, in iron for all classes it is uh, 30 and uh, for iodine it is 0.5 like this this is available in the icr book you can refer but uh, the level of mineral requirement depends on the age growth and production as i already discussed in the beginning so uh, in the beginning i have uh, told you that uh, the 
National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology, uh, Bangalore, NINP Bangalore, they have developed the mineral mixture for sheep and goat. The small ruminants like sheep and goat have specific mineral requirements, uh, which is different from large ruminants. That is why they have formulated, NINP has formulated a mineral mixture exclusively for sheep and goat. And uh, this technology is licensed for different private companies, uh, namely Nandi, Nandi Goat Mint. And uh, there are other three, four companies they have given the license. And the salient feature is the precise mineral supplementation as per the requirement. And the, they have uh, providing the balanced proportion of minerals to avoid antagonistic reactions. And the cost benefit ratio is one is to 1.9. And these are the pictures, goat mean and sheep mean, which are developed by this NINP. And they have also developed uh, long back the area specific mineral mixture for the ruminants. And it is wrongly practiced that the mineral mixture is added to the compound feed without considering the mineral status of the area or the soil based on the soil, which leads to imbalances of minerals. Okay. If the level of, for example, I told you, the molybdenum is more than copper is affected. So the level of minerals in the soil is, should be considered before going for the addition of the mineral mixture, supplementation of mineral mixture. So supplementation of area specific minerals for most deficient in that area avoids antagonistic effects. The study was conducted in 10 agroclimatic zones of Karnataka based on which the deficient mineral mixture was prepared. So this is for ruminants and they have already, uh, they have the separate product for sheep and goat. Uh, in market, uh, we, uh, the mineral licks or blocks are also available. Uh, these are some of the example like uh, Neutrolix. Uh, they have three varieties uh, with uh, uh, mineral supplements for as a, a buffer, as an anti-stone to avoid urolithiosis. And to avoid acidosis, they have one product, they have mineral supplementation, just mineral supplementation. And the licks and blocks, they, the animal, they instinctively are effectively take care of its own feeding. We should not be uh, worried about uh, uh, if the toxicity. The animals, they instinctively, they uh, lick the amount of the, they, they get the amount of minerals they required and uh, they stop when they are, the requirement is met. So even if the salt licks are uh, given, they lick up to, uh, they satisfy. More than that, when the tox they don't go for, the toxicity is not seen. More than that, they will not leak. It leaks the salt and minerals until the demand has demand is fulfilled. It means there is no overdosing or addictive behavior. So next, chelated minerals. We the chelated minerals are also available for sheep and goat. It is a general product which is for uh, buffaloes or. Uh, even cattle, uh, sheep, goat, poultry, the chelated minerals are available. The meaning chelation is combining, combining the minerals with the amino acids or small peptides. It is a way of presenting the essential trace minerals, which is readily absorbable and it is can be utilizable and not subject to the interactions commonly experienced with inorganic element forms. The chelated goat premix are available in the market wherein the vitamins, mineral premixes with salts are available in the market for lactating and dry dose. So uh, with the cereals, cereal grains and protein ingredients like soya bean meal or donut cake, we can directly uh, the, add the chelated goat mix and uh, we can feed to the animals. So objectives of this using chelated minerals is to protect the trace minerals during digestion. See, the availability is increased. Bioavailability of minerals is increased. And uh, during the nutritional demands, uh, the, like pregnancy, reproductive stress, weaning stress, rapid growth, when the growth is rapid, the environmental stress, too much cold, too much heat or humidity is there. If there is a health stress, during such situations, we can go for chelated minerals. Research 
has uh, shown that copper and zinc chelates are more readily absorbable and more easily deposited in key tissues such as hooves when it is compared to inorganic zinc sulfate. They have compared the zinc sulfate as such inorganically, feeding that zinc sulfate and feeding the copper and zinc chelates. But the copper and zinc chelates have shown good results. Utilization of copper lysine. So this is one of the chelation with amino acid. Copper lysine has shown uh, the utilization was more compared to inorganic copper. So even in the presence of iron and zinc, the copper is absorbed very easily if it is in the chelated form. So coming to the conclusion at the end, the trace minerals, they play a vital role in health, production and profitability in sheep and goat farming. So we must focus on uh, inclusion of these trace minerals. Uh, usually we ignore the trace minerals. We only concentrate on the major minerals like calcium, phosphorus. So considering above all facts, research findings uh, that we have discussed now, we must uh, focus on the trace minerals which we have discussed.